publicly at the time, and it was, I was quoted in the New York Times, that uh, each one was a government operation, a standard government operation. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's hitting the nail right on the head. Now, like us, you've been faced with a lot of criticism throughout your career. One bit of this came from a guy, a total worm, named Chip Burlett. And oh, Chip Burlett has been writing about me. I'm, I'm his bugaboo. <laughs> I'm yeah. the favorite target of these real funnies. Yeah. Well, let me uh, read real quick. I'm an quote. innocent 83-year-old person who lives alone in a small town, and I'm no threat to anybody, but they constantly uh, portray me as the greatest danger to, to the world and the entire world. Yeah. And, in fact, J. Edgar Hoover himself, when he was director of the FBI, stated that I was the most dangerous man in America. Well, now, the reason we were said that was not because I was on a crime spree or anything. Right. You know, you says we agree with that. Yeah, and you that's, are. That's, that's <laughs> definitely a Well, I guess I am. <laughs> and they certainly uh, never give up. They, they, they always maintain I'm, I'm the most dangerous man in America because I tell the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, this is what we've noticed is that these people never attack on the information or the issue. So right. what they have to do is they have to personally attack you. Isn't that right? It's a personal attack, yeah. I'm, I'm the only person who's ever fired from the staff of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And uh, I was fired on trumped-up charges by Senator Herbert Lehman, whose daughter was the uh, attorney for Alger Hiss. Wow. Eustace, what, did you get to watch Bush's address to the nation the other night, and what is your take on that? Well, the take is the same as everybody's. It was totally disappointed. He offered no uh, word of advice on anything. <laughs> It was a, um, a vaudeville performance, which mm -hmm. uh, he danced off the stage, and uh, the people cheered, and uh, he said nothing. Yeah. Now, before we close today, there's much more involved in Iraq than, than is being relayed to the American public, especially when you go back to the days of Babylon and so forth. Why is the United States so obsessed with Iraq, or maybe I should say even the New World Order, so obsessed with Iraq, and what isn't being told to the American public? Well, Iraq is symbolic uh, as the cradle of world civilization, so it's enormously important to control that area, and that's why they're going after it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they never explain this, of course, to, to not only the citizens of this country, to the world, do they? Yes, it's symbolic, you see. As the cradle of world civilization, the person who controls that area will control the world. It's very simple. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but, of course, uh, George Bush doesn't tell anybody that. No. Yeah, they don't he knows tell us it. a lot. He won't <laughs> talk about it. And he won't talk about an exit, exit strategy for Iraq because he has no intention of exiting from Iraq. Yeah. Now, lastly, safe. Yeah. lastly, in the Middle East, there's supposed to be this, this clear out or this evacuation of the Gaza Strip, and Ariel Sharon's thumping his chest right now. What do you think of Ariel Sharon as being maybe one of the greatest war criminals in the, in the world right now? Oh, he certainly is. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, when he leaves, there will be another war criminal yeah. equal, of equal stature who will immediately take his place. You know, we had Rabin, who was executed by his own Israeli people That's right. because uh, he finally realized we had to give up some of the Jewish settlements in Palestine. And so they promptly executed him and put, and put Sharon, Sharon Perez in. And Sh uh, Perez knows very well he, he will go through a public uh, promise of uh, ending the Jewish settlements, but uh, he'll do not, nothing about it whatsoever. Yeah. Well, Eustace, thank you so much for coming on Wing TV today. And, you know, I don't think we've ever used the term living legend on this show before, but Eustace Mullins is without a doubt a living legend. Find his articles. Find his books. And we love you, Eustace. Yeah. We appreciate well, everything you've Well, thank you so much. Done. Oh, I'm, I also have another title which I've come into in recent years okay. as a national treasure. Many of the people uh, that I write for tell me that I'm a national treasure. Well, we you are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I we think that's because I'm passing on the wisdom of Ezra Pound to the American people. That's See, right. Ezra turned over all of his uh, research to me. He had 30 years of research in Europe. And he turned all over that to me in 1946. Right. So uh, that's really how I've been able to do the, the work. At the age of 25, I uh, was able to tell the people of the world exactly what was going on. Yeah. And, of course, you, well, at my you. age, I had no personal knowledge of any of this. But I, right. uh, Ezra had turned all those results of his work to me, and I, I grew from there. I just continued to uh, uh, examine it. Well, yeah. we're so glad.
glad he did. Exactly. Eustace's website can be found at EustaceMullins.com. His books are The Secrets of the Federal Reserve, also The World Order, and many others. And it's the most important reading you'll ever do. That's right. So, Eustace, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk again, okay? Well, that'll be great. Thank, Thank you. you. I look forward to it. Bye-bye.